and welcome to this week's reading vlog. I'm now just going to put the total number of books I read down the bottom because I sometimes forget to go back to the start of this video and edit the number that I write. So that's that's not happening anymore, but I read whatever is written down below. I am currently reading Dragon Force. This was a library book. Um, it's about dragons, which I like, yay. And this particular dragon is named Evren. He's a last male dragon. So in this world, there were humans and dragons. Um, the humans sort of banished the dragons to another dimension and took a lot of their magic from them. The dragons that are existing in this alternate world are dying because the resources of this planet are becoming rare and scarce and they need to find a way out. So it's up to Evren to sort of breach a tear between the worlds, make his way back to the original planet Earth and uh, bring the dragons home again. So, so far so good. Uh, it's easy to read and I'm not minding it at all. So we'll see how it progresses. So today I am meeting up with one of my best friends since I was a kid because she has been working in LA. Oh, you beautiful girl. Love you. And has gotten back. I need to catch up with her. So we're going out for hot chocolate and also to check out some yarn stores because she is my knitting crochet buddy. So I am very much looking forward to that. But I'm sure that I'm going to finish Dragonfall today. So when I get home and finish it up, I'll catch you guys here. Hello, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, this little one, oh, this little one. The cafe, it's fine, it was cute, we got a table, that's the main thing. Can you get a table? Yes, we got a table. I had a lovely catch up with my bestie, and so my bestie also decided to uh, help select a few more possible potential suitors. So I know I said I was just going to lay low all of winter unless somebody came along that I thought you could be the one. I am a big fat liar. Look, I am at a point in my cycle where I do feel the most energetic and the most social. So I was sort of sitting at home twiddling my thumbs and I thought, what am I doing? Why don't I just chat to some people and um, hit up some cafes again? I'm, I think it, it, it might just be like this. I'll have my hermetic stages where I stay in, don't talk to anybody, I'm alone. And then I'll have my go out and chat to people and see what's out there and then go back in. I still feel like I'm probably not going to meet my partner on a dating app. I feel like it will be a real life situation. I'm trying to orchestrate a meet cute. If the universe could help me with that, that would be great. But yeah, so I had some people there. I asked my friend, like, you look at all these people, you know me, who would you suggest? So she picked four and I'm gonna tell you their names. So I've coined the nicknames because once again, protecting privacy, but I've got Mr. Italiano. I've got Miss Aperol Spritz. I've got Mr. Guitar. These are so inventive guys and Mr. Huberman Experience. So those are the next people that I have started chatting with. Um, obviously, you just started chatting with them today. So. <laughs> are in the chatting phases. We'll see if any of them eventuate into a date. Expectations are just down here. You know, like, I'm like, eh, I'm not expecting anything, to be honest. I wouldn't mind making some friends. Like I said, I'm going with an open energy of just like, maybe these are people that I could be friends with and, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Everything doesn't have to be romantic. But um, I know even though I did meet them on a dating app, but I don't, I don't subscribe to limitations like that. You know, I think if you just meet human beings, like there's different soulmates. You can have a soulmate that's a friend, that's a family member. You can have kindred spirits that you just have things in common with or hobbies, in, you know, that you, are, you both like. So not everything has to be a romantic partner because, yeah, I'm still waiting till I feel like I've met someone that I just know you could be the person I marry. Um, but I can't tell that from a dating app, guys. Who can tell that from a dating app, really? Like I said, from their profiles, I don't feel anything, but profiles are 2D. 
it really doesn't encapsulate a person's energy and essence and who they are. So I'm going with an open mind. Who knows, maybe one of these four could be the future Mr. or Mrs. Starkey stories. <laughs> But I'm just looking to have fun and just enjoy myself and not take everything so seriously. I think I was a bit, I think last time when I started this, I was really nervous about it. I was a bit anxious and I was kind of really, I'm going to be honest, hoping that I'll just meet someone right away, that it would be done, that I would just be like, oh, I found my person, I'm done. I don't have to try this multiple times. And then when it didn't happen that way, I got a bit dejected and decided, well, I am just not even going to try i'm not even going to bother but i've had some time to think and ponder and reflect and to feel the difference in energy like my cycle really does impact how i feel uh, mentally and physically and emotionally and i just thought man don't have to be like i said so serious just go out and enjoy yourself and connect to some human beings and have some fun you've got the time woman <laughs> your schedule is wide open <laughs> you have plenty of time so um that's what i'm doing but i'm also made plans with my friends i'm just like i said i'm in a really social energy at the moment so i meet, met up with my girlfriend today i'm meeting up with my cousin next week and i'm just excited to spend time with some awesome people um i you know i love my children and my cats and enjoy being with them every single day but i i need to i think broaden my my little tiny circle just a little bit i've got more love to give so i find more people to love that being said i did finish dragonfall so Dragonfall, I giving it three and a half. I was entertained. Is it an amazing novel? No, it is pretty average. Uh, don't go in with like high expectations, but it's entertaining. It's about dragons, and I love I love me some dragons. This does include sort of mating bond stuff, but the romance is very. Well, it's not very light. There is a bit of groping, so maybe you know medium. I guess you know just mild salsa level the main two characters they're fine i liked everyone more than the girl i just don't remember her name. i don't remember names guys horrible with names they just fall like sand through the hourglass these are the days of our lives there is um look there's not a lot of world building the magic system i don't think it's finely tuned it was a little bit confusing there is use of say medallions to harness the dragon's energy that are supposedly set to people's individual names but i'm not even going to try and unpack that because it didn't it didn't really make sense pacing was quite quick which i like i i, I prefer medium to fast paced books i'm not a slow paced girly especially in regards to fantasy maybe in a different genre but in fantasy medium to fast my dudes that was fine and i saw on goodreads a lot of people thought the writing style was really confusing and hard to get through but i've just come from reading the book that wouldn't burn <laughs> so compared to that this was an easy read <laughs> but maybe it's not i don't know i'm at that point now where i'm like what are any of these books like i don't know you know, I think with book reviewing, it's just sort of you end up just basing it upon what the, the book you read previously was. I think when you've read a lot of books, it's just sort of, I don't really have any parameters by which I like measure things by anymore. It's all just a big homogenous blob. Um, but I, yeah, it, it entertained me. I read it in one sitting. So three and a half stars, you know. In terms of that, what I'm going to read next, I don't know. I haven't pulled a tarot card yet. So I've got to do a shuffle, pull a card, find out what that is and read it. I'm actually pretty happy my my TBR list is just getting whittled down real low because I have so much free time in my head so I've been reading a lot um, that may change if I find myself on a date but it may not <laughs> so we'll wait and see I'm just going to go and chill out and find a new book to read and I'll touch base with you
Hello, I thought I would keep Nova in the frame here. Let me tell you about my day so far. So I caught up with my beautiful, beautiful cousin for some brunch, which was really lovely. We went to this beautiful cafe called Alimentari in Collingwood, stunning. There were just flowers hanging. I think it's meant to be wisteria and there were plates on the wall. It was like a Mediterranean themed restaurant. I had a semolina rhubarb porridge, which was nice, very bland. <laughs> it's very bland, but I just wanted something that was sort of heavy and warm because it's bloody cold outside. But we had a wonderful catch up and uh, I loved chatting to her. So in terms of what I have been reading, I did read a house with good bones by T. Kingfisher. So with T. Kingfisher, they have been hit and miss for me. I absolutely loved Nettle and Bone, however, and A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. They were my favorites. The other ones like Sword Heart and Paladin and all that didn't really hit for me. And this is meant to be horror. So I was going in with very low expectations because I'm not a horror girly, but I actually enjoyed this. So it took a while to get into. I will say that. It was slow going. And as the woman is an archaeoentomologist, she mostly focuses on insects from historical periods. So she does digs and tries to classify the remains of insects found in historical dig sites. And because of that, she's very uh, focused on her interest, kind of speaks a bit about of neurodivergence, perhaps with her um, intense love of the insects. So if you don't like insects, do not read this book because they feature very, very, very heavily. I'm not really into insects, but I stomached it. So in the beginning, it was a bit dry. It took a while to get into, but once the house guest arrived, oh my gosh, things just got real weird real quick. And the horror element definitely came into play before then. It's just a bit creepy. It's a bit, does the mother have Alzheimer's? Is the narrator unreliable? What's really going on here? Um, but then it just all comes out into the light and it's insane. So I did like the story overall. I love the play on the title, A House With Good Bones, because the story does deal with certain structures that perhaps are in need of rebuilding, family ties that bind and the heritage and legacies that are passed down from them, including physical homes <laughs> and the sort of uh, secrets and pasts of the lives of the occupants that they hide and bear witness to. So I loved the play on the title in terms of how it tied into the book. And by saying also a house with good bones in a horror book, you're getting the hint that supernatural elements might be at play and there might be some creepiness and spookiness involved with said house, which there definitely was. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a bit silly. I will, I will say that it's a bit of fun in the end. It was entertaining. So I'm probably going to give it four stars. <laughs> Even though it was starting into, I, I haven't read many great books lately. So that probably does color my review. It probably is a bit more of a three and a half star read, but I'm giving it a four because in the end I was like, what is going on? And I was glued to the page. I also have a greater appreciation for vultures. Thanks to this book. Next book that I was reading was The Collected Regrets of Clover. So I'd heard a lot of good things about this. Um, I was obviously on the list for all formats, but the audiobook came in first. So I listened to it. I was struggling so bad to not tune out. So with this book, it's about a woman who is a death doula, and that is instantly a very fascinating element for me. I have such an appreciation for death doulas. It is something that I would love to do if I wasn't such an empath. And I mean, I absorb people's energies very, very easily. I'm a big crier. And I think in these situations, you don't need someone sobbing hysterically <laughs> when you're trying to help someone with their transition into death and also help the family with their grief and mourning and loss. So it's something I wish I could do, but I cannot. So I admire those that can. Clover became a death doula because of the loss of her grandfather with whom she was close. And this book is meant to sort of look at perhaps how she's not really being part of life and she's living her life as, as an observer. And when I say observer, I mean that literally. So where this book lost me, I, I listened to 30% of the book, um, is I didn't like Clover as a person. So she is an actual voyeur. There's a difference between people watching, which is something I like to do because human beings fascinate me and I like to just watch the world around me and being a voyeur. Um, Clover likes to get binoculars and peep on people. So didn't love that aspect. She's also very, judgmental of people based on their appearance. She makes judgments just based on how they look. And I'm just, I just wasn't connecting to her. I didn't like her. And like I said, the book was struggling to hold my attention. 
maybe perhaps I'd enjoyed it more if I had read it, but I just have no interest in picking it up again. It just wasn't what I was expecting it to be and I was getting bored. So I did decide to dean of that book. I also read Symphony for a Deadly Throne. This is the third book in the Musai series. So the first book I absolutely loved. The second book was okay. And this third book I DNF'd it. And I don't really, I rarely do that. Normally with a series, if I've made it to the last installment, I will just persevere and push on. But I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to remember how precious the minutes of my life are and not to use them up, spend them on uh, books that I'm not going to enjoy and I was not enjoying this at all. So in this one, you've got the elder sister, Arabella, and she's the sister that I like the least. She's typical, I am an older child, <laughs> I'm the eldest, but she's real typical eldest in that she's quite bossy. She believes that she's right. She orders her siblings about. She's shouldering all of the responsibility of the parents' uh, desires and expectations on her own shoulders. And uh, this romantic trope, which is childhood friends to lovers, is one of my least, it's one of my least favorite tropes. And in this, by this stage, we'd already known that Arabella and Zimri were a couple based on the previous book. So there was no surprise. There was no tension between them. There was no flirting, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not aware that I'm on camera. Um, there was no, you know, build up, all that sort of stuff that I love. I love the slow burn, so there was none of that. You're just going into an established relationship that has its issues, namely being Arabella refused to publicly acknowledge the relationship. And she's a grown woman, and I just found it so frustrating. Pretty much, too, this was all duty, and you know, over my own personal desires. So she was placed in a position where she had to choose between her lover and her responsibility to her father, the king, and naturally, she chose the latter uh, but it's also what's best for Zimri you know it's in his interests because don't say what you really think and what you really feel naturally just uh, make these choices without consulting another person and their feelings and uh, don't be honest about anything to do with you and put your heart to the side all that jazz and I just I just found her insufferable and she's just miserable in this book she's miserable from the first page and when I did, was trying to determine whether or not to DNF this book I looked up um, Goodreads reviews and people said that she's pretty much miserable throughout the entire book and I'm like I, why why would anyone want to read that no one would so unfortunately this series really fizzled out for me um, the first book <laughs> I'd say just stop there and uh, continue on your merry way but that was the symphony for a deadly throne which I waited quite a long time for the final installment just to uh, cast it aside but we shall persevere and continue on. And then I read Ace Voices um, by Eris Young. So what it means to be Ace, Demi, Aromantic, Grey Ace. I picked it up because I am Demi um, and didn't feel cohesive to me. It, it felt very surface level. And I don't know, there's something about the tone or the way it was written. I just didn't enjoy it. And I didn't learn anything <laughs> new, so to speak. It's not that I was trying to learn something new. I don't know, it was just maybe just hearing more people's experiences with being Demi and how they navigate dating, for instance, that would have been really helpful because it's something that I do struggle with, especially in terms of explaining to other people what it means to be Demi. And yeah, I just, I don't know, it just didn't didn't give me what I was looking for uh, in terms of like real life apl applicability, um, in terms of understanding my sexuality and, and using that as a lens of how it affects other areas of my life and hearing from other people and how they navigated you know their sexuality and if they actually have relationships that have been successful and what were the qualities in that partner or relationship that you know enabled it to be successful I would have loved to have read more about that rather than just bits and pieces fragments of different things so this wasn't for me now, in terms of what I am currently reading, I am currently listening to The Near Witch by B.E. Schwab. So far, not so good. <laughs> really not so good. I did enjoy the other books I've read of V.E. Schwab. I didn't love them, but I enjoyed them. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm starting to near the point where if it doesn't really capture my interest and I'm not invested, I'm going to DNF it. I have a very strong feeling it's going to be DNF, but that's what I am listening to in terms of what I am reading, I uh, pulled some cards. And so I'm going to pick up Strong Female Character by Fern Brady. She is a comic. Um, I think she's neurodivergent. 
so I'm interested to read sort of her non-fiction book. Today I'm picking my kids up from school and then Thursday is my taking myself out day. I'm definitely going to be hitting up more of the city fringe <laughs> suburbs because this, like I said this cafe today was gorgeous. Um, I liked the energy of the place. It was there were quite a few beautiful people I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was admiring all of the beauty around me, including my cousins. She's such a stunner, but I'm not going to post her face on here, but she's a beautiful, an absolute goddess. And um, yeah, I just liked the vibe. I liked the vibe. And I think after hearing her describe her meet cute, because we're both in the singles boat and we both had similar experiences with past relationships and we were both sort of so... I'm gonna say jaded, but jaded about online dating and just how much it sucks. So to hear her that she actually had this absolute adorable meet cute and she's met this so far, it's once it's early days, but so far this person who seems to be really wonderful and who treats her well and is respectful and kind and all of these beautiful qualities. I don't know, other people's joy is my joy. Other people's happiness is my happiness. And I just want that for everyone in the world. I want everyone to find someone who makes them feel safe and loved and that they can be themselves with that's just the best. If we could all find that person for us, wouldn't that be wonderful for those of us that want to find partners? Um, but it, yeah, it's kind of given me a bit of hope that maybe I might actually meet someone in the real world. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'll uh, touch base with you Honey, on Thursday. you've got a big storm coming. Day. been a while I apologize for the sound of my voice but this is the best that it's been thus far so <laughs> after Tuesday we all got sick with the flu real, real bad guys so bad I haven't had the flu in like eight years and this one was an absolute bloody doozy so I actually completely utterly lost my voice for the first seven days I'm on day nine now and still quite sick <laughs> still quite sick uh but i just wanted to finish this vlog and just get it out there because it's been just far far too long so i'm just going to try my best a lot of these books i read so long ago now um and my flu brain is not is not it <laughs> so bear with me but let me try and get through it so i did end up dnfing the near witch i'm not sure if i mentioned that but it was just so utterly boring and i did not care and so I just a DNF that one. And then I read Ducks, which is a graphic novel about a woman's experience um, working in the oil fields. And unfortunately, it definitely was what I would be expecting from a woman working in such an occupation. Uh, this book is incredibly heavy. It talks about her experiences. So just be aware that there is sexism, there is rape, there's just very dark the illustration style is also quite dark and grim and sort of reflects that almost it feels like she's in a prison pretty much uh, of, she's in a prison of poverty and that's what's forced her to work in such a job to try and relieve herself of her educational debts um so it's like i said i didn't i can't say i enjoyed my time reading it uh, it's very confronting um, I appreciate the vulnerability and the honesty of it. Uh, it's a long graphic novel and I'm glad that they're no longer in the oil fields. I, I don't wish that upon anybody, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so that was Ducks. And then I read The Sinister Booksellers of Bath. I decided to DNF this. I really enjoyed the first one. I couldn't care less about this one. It just was really boring. It was really boring. Um, even though they were sucked into a map with some stone creatures and all that, I just couldn't get into it at all. And it didn't keep my attention, so I decided to DNF that one. And then I read Happier Hour. Um, so sort of like how to manage your time and spend it on things that matter and what things do matter. Look, this book's okay. It's definitely for people with disposable income, you know. Uh, there's a bit of privilege in here and and a lot of, well, you know, it turns out that things there's a there's a scale that they use so the more meaningful and fun something is and the less meaningful and fun something is and it turns out things like housework and your job um 
less fun or less meaningful and uh, outsource what you can. So outsource doing the housework or outsource cooking food, outsource childcare, like free your time up to spend on things that you do like, but it's like, well, not everyone has an option to use money to outsource these things and they have to do the housework and they have to work the jobs and they have to take care of their children. So um, like, look, I got some stuff out of it, obviously, in terms of like looking at what I spend my time on, what's giving me the most bang for my buck in terms of um, things that I don't have to spend as much time on. You know, we all still have to work. I still have to do the laundry and the dishes and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I just can't justify the money by on spending, you know, getting food outsourced. <laughs> it's just food as expensive as it is in the raw ingredients. But um, look, yeah, there's definitely things like, obviously this book says once again that social media is one that is less fun and less meaningful and something that people always regret spending as much time on. I don't really do social media, so. But yeah, it's, it's okay, it's just not, it's nothing great. And like I said, it was just so, it was so white privilege. It was this lady, come on man like you're just outsourcing everything you and your husband working your two jobs just just paying everybody else to do the menial work that you don't want to do so yeah that was a happier hour and then i read orphea and eurydiceus and this is a gender bent retelling of orpheus and eurydice uh it's, it's bisexual which is cool i was hoping it was like just sapphic but it's bisexual guys this is freaking long man oh my god I listened to half of this in a book because while I was sick, um, I could not read my eyes. My eyes hurt. My eyeballs were sore. So I did listen to a lot of audiobooks and I'm not a big audiobook fan, but I, that's all I could do. That's all I could do while lying in agony. Um, so it lured me in with the gender bent Greek mythology retelling and then it bored me to tears. Um, it's just the pacing was so off. The pacing was so slow. 40% of the way in the book and they're still lollygagging on Mummy's Island. Like nothing's really happened. Nothing's really happened. Uh, so, and the, and the love between Orphea and Eurydiceus, I wasn't buying it. I felt a bit insta-lovey and there was just nothing there. It's a really hard thing. Um, either authors can write chemistry between characters or they can't. And in this case, they could not. So 40% of the way through, I was like, my God, I'm done. Can't continue, shan't. And then I read Carmen, which is a, a graphic novel. Uh, very full on trigger warnings, man. On page suicide. So um, this book, look, it was really interesting. I loved the art style. They were very shamey about the person who committed suicide. And I don't really like that angle, like shaming the person for committing suicide and telling them off for how much pain they've caused everybody else for being a coward. I don't like that kind of thing. So put that aside, the whole like aspect of these Carmens, like these sort of death grim reapers, whatever you want to call them, was really interesting. Um, I did enjoy reading it uh, I probably would have given it if I'm going to rate it like three three and a half but um I won't continue it's just too, too dark and heavy for me like I don't want to see on page suicide that's just it's just not where I'm, where I'm at in my life I'm trying to keep it light and fun and magical you know not so dark and heavy so that was common and then I borrowed this eat the rainbow cookbook which is like a vegan cookbook I tried some of the recipes they're okay they're fine there's nothing like new though and, and different um for me but the, the the book quality was great the pictures were lovely there's a good breadth of recipes especially if you're starting out as a vegan like amazing you know I um, wish stuff like this was around when I was a vegan for you know 20 years 20 years ago um, but, uh, yeah, that was, it was a good book. And then I read Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore. Guys, this had so much potential. Just the idea of it. So it's like, you've got a guy and he works at this really weird bookstore with this very enigmatic bookstore owner. And there's like something afoot, something odd going on, some weird characters that keep coming in like clockwork and, uh, feels a bit like a book cult. And that's kind of what it is. <laughs> It's, it's basically like a book cult, um, but it's just not interesting. It's just not interesting. Once again, it just, the execution was lacking. The pacing was slow. The main guy is a bit boring. He just also happens to be friends with all these people that have the exact niche skills and talents he needs to crack this mystery. Um, the, the chick in this, the woman. So she is a very ridiculously attractive cat-like woman named Cat who works in the tech industry 
um, and he's super smart but super ambitious. Everyone just felt like a bit like a caricature. And this book overall, it really did just feel like an advertisement for Google and Kindles. I cannot tell you how much Google is mentioned because one of these girls works for Google and it's only with Google's super machine computer help that they're able to crack this stuff. And Google is the way of the future. And you know, these, these are book selling cult people need to get on board with tech because that's the way to go, not analog. And uh, aren't Kindles great? <laughs> so that really just turned me off as well. It's just like, Stop shoving these brand names in my face. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, but yeah, I guess, look, it was sort of about the power of collaboration all coming together to solve a mystery. The romance was piss poor, so don't even go into it for that at all. It was, yeah, it was a very average at best. And um, the mystery at the end was just a bit of a letdown. After all that, like I did persevere. So I'm like, all right, let's find out what this mysterious book's message is. And then it's like, okay. Cool, man. Thanks for wasting my time. I also read a uh, Strong Female Character by Fern Brady. So this was a non-fiction sort of memoir, autobiography. Fern is a comedian and also neurodivergent. So it was very much heavily on that whole thing of like how being finally able to be diagnosed after not being diagnosed their whole life and just labeled as difficult and everything else and all the struggles that go with not understanding why you're acting the way you're acting and why things are happening to you. It's a very heavy book. There is a lot of sexual assault, suicide, domestic abuse, eating disorders. So be forewarned, it's very real and raw. And um, I did enjoy reading it and seeing like what she went through and her life experiences. Um, so yeah, I if I were to rate it, it'd probably be like a four, but I don't rate autobiographies but um I did yeah, enjoy reading it and those were the rest of the books that I read <laughs> in that time I've obviously read a lot more and I'm gonna have to do a lot of filming not today I still look and feel awful I'm hoping that another good night's sleep will uh, give me some pep in my step so I can talk about everything else that I've read this week but yeah there's nothing like illness to really slam on the brakes and put a cog a spanner in the works you know like <laughs> nothing was done we were just surviving I was doing the bare minimum for me and my kids and my cats and um, just trying to make it through the day and I'm like all right I guess life can start to actually happen now perhaps and still not enough for me but um yeah I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys apologies for the delay but um, I've got a lot of videos I'm going to have to uh, to churn through now to catch up on I've got my monthly wrap-up I've got a book recommendation video I want to do. I've got another reading vlog that was themed. So um, yeah, I'm going to be a busy, busy girl. I hope that wherever you are, you have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening. And as always, stay well, start child.